your life hundred percent to solar energy. Avoid one third, minimize one third, and the last and important step is generate only one third. It's very important that you generate only one third, irrespective of whether you have a lot of money or not. You know? Otherwise, if you are going to use too much of solar energy, then also we are going to regret because we are going to generate lot of waste. and that waste has to be recycled 30 years down the line 40 years down the line so there is a saying in hindi now so chuhe kha ke billi khach ko chali don't do that only generate as little as possible so how you can generate and how you can be independent well it is very simple the solar photovoltaic based technologies have become very efficient very cost effective and very widely available everywhere every state government net the central government everywhere in the world are now promoting solar energy you can also use this opportunity and surrender your electricity connection and go 100% on solar of course there are possibilities of doing the net metering so that you can connect your solar system to the grid and give electricity to the grid take electricity from the grid whenever required in this case you don't have to use the battery but that will not limit your consumption that will not follow the first and second principle that i told you and therefore the best thing is surrender electricity connection be completely independent so that you don't have to pay electricity bills you generate and consume your own energy requirement you are the king of your own house well so then if that is the case how much is the cost how much air is required how much solar panel required how much battery required all those things are question mark and of course in this uh, i'm going to only give the thumb rules how to do that you can use the thumb rule and get an idea all right so now suppose your requirement of electricity before you started watching this video series is let's say 300 unit you have avoided 1/3 that is 100 unit you have minimized 1/3 another 100 unit so what is remaining only 100 units so you are going to generate only 100 units suppose you need to generate 100 units in a month using solar system which is not connected with the grid what are the requirements number 1 the area requirement for area requirement the thumb rule is very simple it is 1 is to 1 so one unit of electricity requires one square feet of area on a monthly basis so in a month if you need 100 units of electricity to be generated what you need is 100 square feet area only that's not a lot of area so suppose your requirement is 150 units so your area requirement is 150 units if your requirement is 200 units per month your area re- requirement is 200 square feet per month isn't it very simple all right next thing is how much panels are required how many wattage of panel is required remember the panel is measured in wattage so the the thumb rule is 1 is to 10 so if your energy requirement electricity requirement is 100 units 1 is to 10 so 10 watt for every one unit so for 100 unit how much it will become 100 times 10 so it becomes 1000 watt isn't it again very simple So, if you want to generate 100 units per month, then you should have 1,000 watt of solar panel or 1 kilowatt of solar panel. Isn't it simple? If your energy requirement is 150 units per month, then you should have 1,500 watts of solar panel. Simple. The next thing is how much battery is required. Well, the the amount of battery that again as a choice of a user it depends on how much backup you want how much secure you want to be but a simple thumb rule is whatever is your electricity requirement per day that much is the storage capacity you should have okay for example if you are going to use 100 units per month which means about which means about 3.3 units per day of storage you should use If you are going to use lead acid batteries, then you need to double it because you can only extract 50% power from the or 50% energy from the lead acid battery. 
So if you are going to use this energy in the ladder set, then your storage should be of 6.6 kilowatt hour or about 7 kilowatt hour. If you are using LFP or lithium ferrophosphate based battery, then you should use only 3.3 or let's say 4 kilowatt hour of storage. That should be sufficient for you. So that's a thumb rule for the energy storage. And the next and the most important thumb rule is how much does it cost? Thumb rule is 1 is to 1000. In the worst case scenario, in the best case scenario, 1 is to 800 rupees, let's say. So if you are going to use 1 unit of electricity per month, then your cost of everything put together, the panel, the battery, the wire structure is 1000 rupees. So for 1 unit, so which means that for 50 units per month, you need 50,000 rupees. For 100 units per month, you need 100,000 rupees. That is the higher side I have taken, but lower side it can be 80,000 also. Isn't it very simple thumb rule again? If your electricity requirement is 150 units per month, then you, you require 150,000 for installing complete solar system. Now, as I said again, this is a conservative number, this is a higher side. In reality, you need to spend about 15-20% lower than this number. Alright, so with this thumb rules, anyone can just figure out how much it costs, how much area is required, how many panels are required, how many batteries are required and that should be more than sufficient to fulfill your requirement. Many people have this doubt, what will happen in the summer season, what will happen in the rainy season, what will happen in the winter season. Well, during the rainy season and winter season also the amount of sunlight that is received on the surface of earth is only 20 to 30 percent less than the normal situation. In some coastal area it may be 40 percent less which means that your electricity generation will reduce by 20 percent, 20 percent or even 40 percent. What is the best way to compensate this is use 30 to 40 percent extra panel, 20 percent extra panel. And that should make sure that you can fulfill, you can generate and fulfill all your electricity requirement 365 days in a year. There may be one or two, three days here and there when you may not generate enough. But well, that is what we can live with. Even if you get electricity from the grid supply, many times there is a power failure, isn't it? You can live with it. Similarly, you can live with if there are plenty of cloudy days continuously up and after them. But with this thumb rule, you should be able to generate and fulfill your electricity requirement at home. You should be able to surrender electricity connection. You should be able to take part in mitigating the climate change. You should be proud, honored, saying that I am not part of the pollution, I am the part of the solution. Let us all together become part of the solution so that we can create a sustainable future for our future generation. If you really love your children, if you really want to bless your children, the best way to love and bless them is give them a clean air, clean water, a clean, livable, sustainable planet for them. And the best way to do is surrender electricity connection. Be the part of Energy and Climate Keeper program and I hope you will help. These videos are mainly for the volunteers. I hope that all the volunteers will help society and the people in the society to convince them and get them to take a pledge to do something. The whole idea of the Keeper program is understand, pledge and progress. So thank you very much. In the next session, I will tell you how to take a pledge and monitor the progress.